Happy Gemini, and welcome to my live event where I come on live every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern to share some type of little project. I answer questions that y'all are including for me in the chat box, and uh, we go live on two platforms, on the Crafty Gemini Facebook page, as well as the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. So welcome to wherever you all are tuning in from and whichever platform you are watching me from. I am coming to you from my home sewing studio in North Central Florida, so welcome. It's cloudy out and it hasn't started raining yet, but I'm sure it will because it rains every day. All right, so let's make sure technology is on our side. If you can see me and hear me, let me know below. Let me know what city, town, country, wherever you're tuning in from. Everything looks good? Awesome. All right, great. Hi, Diana. She says she's the first time she's tuning in and watching from Bermuda. Awesome. Welcome to a Caribbean friend. I'm Dominican, so you know, we love the islands. Okay, uh, let's see. Sheila tuning in from Rockport, Massachusetts. Hi, Marion tuning in from Germany. Awesome. Okay, great. So it looks like a lot of you can see me and hear me just fine. And I wanted to show you what we're going to be working on today. I'm a little bit obsessed with zipper pouches in general but there's nothing like a cute, tiny little zippered pouch. So these are made out of faux leather. If you tuned in last week for Whip Wednesday number 45, which you can also do a search for on YouTube and find the archived uh, Whip Wednesdays. We've done a ton, 46 obviously, including today's. And um, we made a zippered pouch last week that was out of fabric and using an interfacing called Durafuse. And actually, I have it right here with my knitting stuff. So let me grab it real quick. Here is the one that we made last week, or one of them, okay? So we're going to be working on one that's slightly smaller, same thing, uh, but without interfacing because we're using faux leather fabric, which as most of you know, if you've worked with cork fabric, craft text, like these types of fabrics that have more body and stability to them without the need of adding or fusing, interfacing to it, you know that it can stand alone. It has enough shape to be its own thing, right? So this is the one that we made last week. So if you want to learn how to make it out of your scrap quilting cotton fabrics with a little interfacing called Durafuse that we sell in the online shop, you can go back and watch Whip Wednesday number 45. But this this time I wanted to whip some of these up because as you know, we do carry faux leather sheets in our online shop and I've done several different projects already. There are free tutorials that you can watch on my YouTube channel, different Whip Wednesday, where we have made a bunch of different zippered pouches using these faux leather sheets. Now each sheet measures roughly, they're already pre-cut and so they measure about eight and a quarter inches by I want to say 11 and three quarters, like almost 12, something like that. And so I always like to come up with different little projects that you can make with these sheets. So let's go ahead and switch over to my um, over the shoulder camera shot here so that I can show you how many you can cut out of each sheet. Let me scoop my sewing machine back for a second. Look how cute they are. I love them. So in this one, I already have a bunch of my little like knitting crochet supplies. If you're a hand uh, sewist, if you do uh, English paper piecing, say you bind a lot of quilts by hand, you might have a thimble, some needles, all that kind of stuff. So here I had a little measuring tape and a bunch of stitch markers because I'm working on a, new, uh, a couple new knitting patterns. So I keep those in there. You can put a tapestry needle. So you see it's little, but it still holds a lot. Now the ones we're going to be making today are a little bit smaller because I found that I wanted them just a touch smaller uh, for my knitting and crochet notions again. So let's take some uh, rough measurements real quick. These guys measure about three and a quarter inches by three and a half. So they're quite small. I mean, look at that. How cute, right? There's something about just like a cutesy little pouch that are so fun. Oh, thank you, Susan, you're sweet. She says, you look beautiful today. Going with a little bit of a preppy look because I haven't washed my hair, so I snatched it back. And this top, y'all, for those of you that have been buying the Rayon Shally from us in our online shop, maybe you're a student in my Jolly Giselle class, I don't know if I went out of focus here, but you can see that this is view B option with the elasticated sleeves. They don't cinch in. It's just kind of loose and it's a bracelet length sleeve. And this is the one that I made about a size and a half bigger than what I normally wear. But this one has the little keyhole button option in the back too for the closure. I thought it was a little preppy look. Kind of cute. I like it. And it's breezy, right? So it's good to wear still here in Florida where the temperatures are still super hot and humid. All right. Okay. Let's see. Um, if you ever have issues ordering from our shop, I'll just give a quick plug here. We sell hundreds of physical products and digital courses in our online shop. A lot of times people don't know we have one. You can find it at craftygemini.com shop. 
okay? So all our products are there, including the faux leather sheets, and I'm gonna show you them in a second. Uh, if you ever have issues ordering from the site, you can always reach out to our customer service team by emailing bea at craftygemini.com. So B B E A at craftygemini.com. Okay. Uh, good morning. Some of y'all is the morning. Awesome. Okay. Oh, Becky has a quick question. She says, can a brother and brother machine go through that? I have used brother and baby lock and Elna embroidery machines before on the faux leather and it does. I actually have a lot of students who make some of the larger zip pouch projects that I've featured on my channel with our faux leather that we carry and they've embroidered all kinds of fun stuff, monograms and cool little designs. So it's a great kind of quick and easy way to um, customize, you know, the same little pouch in different colors. So here is an example of one of the four pack. So we sell two different types of bundles and actually my um, shipping team yesterday went ahead and restocked these. So I kind of wanted to give it a plug. You can order four sheets of assorted colors. We don't, you know, we get, we order in a mixed uh, batches of the different sheets. So I grabbed one from inventory and I just wanted to show you like whoever orders this one will get, this is a light blue. This is a super cute metallic pink. Okay. Then you have a solid black and then you have this really fun pop of bright yellow. So this would be a four pack bundle that comes with my little signed card and a sticker. And you can order the faux leather sheets from us just like that. Or if you don't have any craft zippers and you want to make these pouches, we also sell these in three packs. So three packs, three different colors of the faux leather sheets, and then three random colors of zippers. So if you don't have zippers, that's another great way. We have the links to both of those items in our shop in the description box below this video. We're also putting them in the chat for you here. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab one of our sheets. And I thought I would use a neutral color with a little pop of this fun zipper. And this is all you need, obviously, aside from your sewing machine and some basic sewing supplies, all you need is one of our faux leather sheets and a zipper. It could be a longer zipper. If it's longer, it's kind of easier to work with. So you have more room as you top stitch the zipper into place. Uh, but if you don't, you know, a shorter one like this works fine also. All right, let's see. Margie says, cute pouch is perfect to hold my thread gloss. Absolutely. If you do hand embroidery or cross stitch and you have like a little tin of um, beeswax or some type of thread gloss, you can put it in there with your needles and that would be super cute to have. Even like a little magnetic, those little magnetic needle minders, those are pretty small and you can throw those in there too. Okay. Awesome. Welcome, Biz. I'm glad that you finally made a live. She says, cute pouch and great use of small zips. This is a great scrap buster, and that's why I like selling these um, sheets of faux leather. You can crank out a bunch of projects. So the dimensions we're gonna be cutting out are four inches by seven inches, and so I worked it out for you so you can see if you'd ordered a four pack of the faux leather, you would be able to make 12 of them, and they're pretty affordable. I think we sell them for like 10 bucks, the four pack. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take my five by 10 Crafty Gemini ruler, and I'm gonna go down here. Uh, because I'm right-handed, so I'll be using the rotary cutter in my right hand, and I'm going to align this edge on four inches because that's what I want. And this is a ruler that I designed to help make it easier for you to uh, orient your ruler and can count. Instead of having to count backwards or dealing with half inch or three eighths, whatever, you can look at the numbers. I need four inches, so I just put the edge on four. Simple enough. And then I'm gonna cut here. So that's four. This is four. Should I scoot over some? And I was, I, I didn't cut all the way through because I was on the cut, uh, the join here of my cutting mats. So the blade didn't have a full surface to go on. Okay, so that's four. And this should be right around four too. It's a little bit shy because I said the, the, the length of my sheets are about 11 and three quarters, 11 and seven eighths. And so you can see that I'm just a little shy of four, which is still gonna work fine, okay? So you can make three of these pouches out of this. If you don't wanna sub cut them down because I said the dimensions are four by seven, you can actually leave it like this and you'll just end up with a slightly bigger pouch than I have. But again, I'm really kind of in love with this little teensy little size. So I'm gonna turn these over and subcut them to seven. So again, I take my seven lengthwise here on my ruler. I'm gonna scoot it away from the join of my mats. Everybody thinks this is like one huge mat. It's not. Ulfa sells them in three panels and then they're put together with these little screws. So if you don't have them bumped up together, you know, they can separate right there and you don't wanna run your rotary cutter blade down there because it won't cut. 
Okay, so there's my four by seven. And you basically end up with this little piece, which you can do a lot with, right? If you wanted to add a little tab in the side seam here and add maybe a key ring or something, you could use this little bit to make yourself your own little strap, right? Top stitch it and put it inside the seam and add other things to it, right? Because they don't fray. So that's cool. I'm going to just go ahead and sub cut these down. I'll make one live on camera with y'all and then... I'm gonna be making more. I just have to go into my stash of zippers and make or and pull a few more fun colors to go with this kind of taupey faux leather. If you have made any of my zipper pouch projects with my faux leather, let me know how it was to work with it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from y'all. I know a lot of people have been restock or excuse me, uh, rebuying the sheets and we had sold out for a bit. So since we just restocked. Um, we have this. Now, if you don't have faux leather or uh, you have maybe cork fabric in your stash, my friend Sarah from SoSweetness.com has, I think, the largest inventory of cork fabric. That's always where I buy mine. And uh, she sells it in so many different colors. So that's another option. If you ever had a little, you know, a little stash of a cork fabric that would work here as well because we just need a fabric that's sturdy enough to stand on its own that we don't need to interface and that does not fray so that we can leave the edges raw and that's what makes it a super quick make. Okay, Anita says, do we need to square up the leather in order to use it? I find that these are pre-cut and they're pretty spot on. If it's a little off, don't worry about squaring it off. As long as your seams are pretty consistent, you're gonna be fine. But if you feel like you need to, feel free to do it, okay? Oh, awesome, Tamara says, your faux leather is a dream to sew with. I love it, I'm glad to hear it, Tamara. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Epi says, these would be great for my new earbuds. Absolutely. My daughter saw them and she's like, oh my gosh, they're so cute. You can put so many different little things in here, right? All right. So we have our four inch by seven inch piece pre-cut. I'm going to grab my sewing machine and I am going to change out the presser foot to my zipper foot real quick. And that's going to allow me this on um, this machine. It just pops off. These are just snap on feet. By now, y'all already know I like to hook up my zipper uh, feet on the left side so that the needle is to the left. And let me just turn that a little bit that way, okay? Lindy says, I've used your faux leather before. I love it. It sells like butter. I think so too, so I'm glad to hear that also. Awesome. Yes, Anna, you can definitely pick up the faux leather in our online shop at craftygemini.com slash shop. And we have a lot of product products there. So if you can't find it, we have put in the direct link straight to the product page in uh, the description box of this video, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook. All right. So I'm going to blow through this one super fast without even using clips because this is a synthetic fabric. You don't want to hit it with your iron, so there's no slowing us down with pressing, okay? We're going to place both of these zipper pretty side facing up, and that means that it's the zipper pull side. I should see the zipper pull here. My faux leather is also pretty side face up, and I bump up the faux leather to the left side of the zipper. Then I just flip the zipper onto it. And I'm gonna center it a little bit here because I have a longer zipper than what I need. So I find that leaving myself some zipper tape uh, extending pass on this end and on this end makes it easier to work with for the top stitching. So now the zipper tape and the faux leather are matching up on the side there. Raw edge is aligned. I'm on this machine. I'm going to lengthen the stitch length just a little because I don't want it to get hung up since I'm going through, you know, a couple little chunky layers here since the faux leather is thicker than just a woven cotton fabric. I made sure that I just turned on and off the machine because I have the zipper foot on. Remember we talked about this last week. You don't want to have that needle in the center position, or excuse me, you don't want to have moved the needle away from its center position when you put on the zipper foot because it can come down right on the metal part of the foot and you can break a needle. And we, I think we talked about that last time that a bunch of us were like, yeah, I've done that before. Okay, so I'm going to sink my needle down. And then I'm just following the right side edge of my zipper foot on the edge of the zipper and the faux leather. And you just sew one straight seam. Okay. This machine is a basic um, Juki. It's an LB5020. I have like 40 of y'all on the wait list for this machine. We still have not received them in stock. A bunch of um, shipping containers and stuff are being held in California, so they're not quite on land yet. All right, so after I've sewn this one, I'm going to tuck that seam allowance down. Oops. I'm gonna tuck that seam allowance down so that I can now top stitch here because look, if I let it go, you see how it flips back? 
because the faux leather has more weight and body to it than the zipper tape, it is taking over basically and controlling that zipper tape. And I want to control the faux leather so it lies flat on the inside of my pouch. So I'm gonna flip this up. So now I'm looking at pretty side of the faux leather and pretty side of the zipper, okay? I'm going to put it under here again. And now I'm gonna stitch on the left hand side. So what I'm aligning on the right is the zipper foot with the right or the left side edge of the zipper teeth themselves. You just wanna do something consistent. You can go super narrow, you can go a little bit chunkier, but the point is on this side, I wanna catch this seam allowance flat down, okay? And then for this, because we're top stitching, we're going through more layers now, go ahead, make sure that you, do you know what I'm about to say? Lengthen that stitch length. So on this machine, I'm gonna go up to a 3.5. Now we will mention this here because it always comes up. Am I using a Teflon foot? Am I doing anything special for the faux leather? I never have a problem sewing through different types of textiles with my Jukies, but if your machine gets hung up on faux leather or vinyl and stuff like that, then feel free to you know change out whatever accessory foot it requires. But you can see, I don't have any problems, thank goodness. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, Epi says that Juki is so quiet. It is pretty quiet. And my mic is right here, so you would definitely be, you know, able to hear it. Look how cute. So that's one. So you see how that top stitching is through the layers, and when I flip it, now there's nothing lifting up. I actually did an excellent job there, y'all. It's really close to the bottom edge. The aqua colored thread blends in with this blue zipper, and it's all held down perfectly straight down. So now, let me trim some threads here real quick. Whoops, I keep hitting that start stop button under here. Okay, so now I'm going to lift this bottom unsewn edge of my faux leather, bring it up to the top edge of the zipper tape. This is what I call my easiest zipper pouch. When we do this with fabric and some interfacing, I, um, look at me, I um, teach it a lot to kids, to beginners, to entry level people, you know? Adults and kids, it doesn't matter. And the reason for that is because you're only sewing straight seams and at the end you have a fully functioning project. It's not like something cute you put on the wall just to look at, it's like you can use the pouch, right? As soon as you're done with it. So we're bringing this to here. The key and most important part of this step is that you align this top that we just brought over so that it is aligned with the side. You don't want it like that and you don't want it like this. Okay, it has to be folded exactly in line with the other one. And so here's where some of you may find the need to put a clip or two. I don't, but this is where you could so that you don't, you know, so it doesn't shift one way or the other on you. The needle I'm using for this is an 8012 universal. Great question. This oftentimes come up. I feel like a lot of people just assume, if, especially if you're not kind of used to working with the cork and the um, faux leathers and vinyls and stuff like that, they'll automatically think, whoa, that's way thick. I need to go up to a 9014. You can, and it obviously will work, but I would say play with it on your sewing machine first, because if your sewing machine has good power, an 8012 is more than enough. I never even feel like any hesitation on any, any of my Juki sewing machines, especially. But some people I know, maybe you have a more entry level machine that's a little bit more basic. And instead of stressing your machine more, you, you know, you can also just go up in the needle size. So you uh, are working with a bigger, thicker needle. Okay. But I'm using an 8012 universal. Okay. So Michelle's asking a great question. Why no backstitch to tie it in? She says, sorry, very novice sewer. No worries. So the reason, I think I talked about this last time. I try to bring it up every once in a while. The reason I haven't backstitched here or here, is because I already know how to make these pouches. So I know that after I sew the faux leather to the zipper, I need to close up the sides. And what does that mean? That I need to stitch perpendicular to the seam that I've already sewn. And so if I'm sewing perpendicular to it, that's gonna set it and lock it in place, okay? If it is, basically the way you wanna think about it is, if it is the last seam that you're sewing and nothing else is gonna come across or over it, then you probably want to backstitch, right? Because you don't want it to come apart, especially on, uh, for some type of a bag that you're going to be putting some wear and tear and stress on those seams. So that's why I don't backstitch because I know that I don't have to because when I go to do these side seams to close up the pouch on the sides, I will backstitch, right? On those because those are the final seams that I'll be sewing. So you'll see. But yes, great question. 
So again, we're doing the same thing we did before. And remember that we had a shorter stitch length to what I say I call a construction stitch. And then we went up in the stitch length for the top stitching. So now I'm attaching zipper to faux leather. So we're going back down, okay, to um, construction stitch. So I'm going back down to 2.4 on this one. And then again, lining up the zipper, um, the side of the zipper foot with the side of the fabric and the zipper tape. All right, so we sewed it, now we need to top stitch. And so for a lot of beginners, this is the part where you're kind of like, well, how am I gonna reach to bring this down here and top stitch through here when this is what the little pouch looks like? So all you gotta do is come in here and open up your zipper. Clarissa is asking if I'm using a zipper foot. I am, I absolutely changed out to my zipper foot for this. Hi, Demps Designs. She says, hello from Florida, first time joining your live. Well, hello from Florida, back at you. All right, so I've opened the zipper. Let me keep opening it up. So now once it's fully open, I can see what I'm working with. I just sewed it there, and I know that that seam allowance needs to be pushed down, okay? And I need to, whoops, and I need to top stitch here. So now that this is open, you see you're buying yourself some room to insert the zipper foot here. Make sure my thread doesn't come out of my needle, pull those threads to the back so you have something to start with. And then I'm going to align it just like I did the first time. Now the faux leather, because it is thicker than the zipper tape, it wants to pop out on you and flip out. So one key thing here would be, do not let this roll up like this and cover your zipper teeth. Because if you stitch that into place, you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to open and close that zipper because you have this extra fabric in there. So you need to pull on the faux leather away from the zipper teeth to expose the zipper teeth, le teeth like this so that when you top stitch it, it holds it flat in place. All right, so I am going to top stitch. So again, I gotta remember, bump up my stitch length. I'm aligning zipper foot with the left side edge of the zipper teeth. Right there's where I wanna start. And I haven't back stitched yet, okay? And I'll show you when I do that. And you can, or you can't, you know, I have some students that they just like backstitch at every single seam, which is okay. It's not like you're doing anything bad until you get into sewing lighter garments, lightweight fabrics, things that like you don't want to add that extra stiffness and bulk of that thread in a seam. So it's good to know the why of why we do things so that you know that, hey, if I don't need that there, then I don't have to do it. All right. So for this point, see, everything is flat down. The seam allowances are, have been stitched down flat. All right. Oh, Bethany says, I love that leather. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, Mary was asking the same question. She says, I noticed that you're not backstitching at the beginning and the end. So hopefully I answered that. I haven't backstitched here or here because now when we stitch these last two seams, we will. And that will help lock those in place. Okay. So I'm going to open the zipper about three quarters of the way. And when I say three quarters of the way, I mean of the way of the width of the fabric, because that's where the zipper is going to be. So now, let me flatten that zipper pull. I'm going to roll this like this. And for such a small pouch, I would say keep this bit of faux leather sticking out to the top of the zipper to about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch. Okay, the reason for that is I don't want to roll this down and put my zipper in the middle like this and lock it in place there. Because then if you're trying to actually use the zip pouch, the only room you really have to put stuff in to catch is down here, unless you're kind of slipping in something tall and turning it, you know what I mean? Like I want the bulk of the pocket area to be underneath the zipper teeth. So I'm gonna roll this back up. And you can measure on either side, I'm pretty good at eyeballing. And actually I'm gonna put a clip here to hold it in the meantime, because I need to change back out. You could keep your zipper foot on here. I'm gonna take mine off since we just have two straight seams to sew, and I wanna make sure that I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, mostly because the pouch is so small, I don't wanna eat up more of the size of the pouch in the seam allowance, because that would be a waste, okay? All right, Sabrina says, just in time for Christmas gift making. Absolutely, y'all know I love a quickie gift. All right, so now I'm just gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'm going back down because now we're holding together the front and the back of our pouch. So this is back to a construction seam, all right? So we're gonna go down, I'm gonna go down to 2.4 on this project is fine. All right, now I'm going to do what I usually do and that is backstitch at the beginning here, 
Then I also backstitch when I go over the zippers and I'll do it there multiple times. And then I'll continue sewing straight down and backstitch at the end again. So now here I'm doing some backstitching three times on one little seam, but that is why I do that to secure it. So let's sink the needle down. I'm taking a few stitches. I'm backstitching. Okay. Key stop with the needle in your project. And as you approach the zipper teeth, two things here. One is make sure that you bring the bottom edge up to match those zipper teeth, because you'll see that if I just let it go, it wants to leave this gap in there. And if you stitch over that, you're going to one, see your stitches and two, you're going to have that gap. So when you close the zipper, it's not going to fully close. So it's up to you to bring those zipper teeth up to match up with the other zipper teeth. Okay. And then the other thing I was going to say is make sure that you're using a craft zipper. If you're going to be doing it like I am here, if you're using a metal zipper, you're not just going to be able to hit the back stitch and go back and forth over metal. You can do it by going slowly and turning your hand wheel to make sure that as the needle goes down into the project, it's kind of spanning those metal teeth so that you don't hit metal and break a needle. But if it's a plastic, uh, teeth zipper, like these craft zippers, you can just go back and forth. It's no big deal. So. Now I'm going to go over the zipper teeth and I go back a couple times just because I find that where I'm stopping and I pull the zipper open to you when I'm using the pouch, if it's just like one line of stitching right there at the end of it, I find that it over time, it tends to just start to come apart and it's more easy to break that one stitch versus a buildup of stitches. Okay. So I did a couple back stitches at the end and that is where we lock in the previous lines of stitching that we've done. Okay. Because there's stitches that are going perpendicular to it. It ain't going to come apart other side. And remember when I said to open the zipper about three quarters of an inch, this is why when you're sewing the second side, make absolutely sure that you have your zipper pull in here because everything that's to the outside, we're going to trim away. That's excess. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, um, Debbie says super cute pouches. I love your teaching style, Vanessa. Thank you, Debbie. I'm glad to hear it. Clarissa says my granddaughter and friends will love these pouches. Absolutely. I think it's going to be super fun. And y'all know me. I love a good pop of color, especially in the zippers. So it's great to just get assorted colors of everything and mix and match. It just makes it look so much more fun. I think so again, we're back stitching at the beginning. I'm going to backstitch when I get over the zipper teeth, but when I get about here halfway, I just stop and make sure that this top bit is consistent, right? I don't want to have more on one side than the other. Then I know my zipper is going to be crooked. So here, everything looks pretty good and straight. We're going to go over the zipper teeth again. I'm backstitching it like three times. Then I come to the edge and I backstitch here again. There we go. So now cut my threads. Let's scoot this out of the way. This part you can trim up with a rotary cutter or scissors. All right. Let's get a little bit closer there. Okay. So now my zippers inside, I know I actually have a working pouch. So you can trim away the excess and on most of these craft zippers, you can just take a lighter and melt down that raw cut edge of the uh, zipper tape. Same thing on the other side. And now one other thing I like to do is to kind of trim away at a 45 degree angle, the, the bulk on the four corners to make it a little bit easier for me to turn out. And I'm going to reach over and grab my bamboo sewing needle, which is great. You can use chopsticks. I know everybody kind of has their preferred tool for helping you poke out corners, but I take my scissors and I just trim a little bit away from the corners. You don't have to get super close to your stitches and you don't want to cut through your stitches. So just stay a little bit of a, uh, away but just cut at a 45 degree angle. Okay. And then if you left your zipper open about three quarters of the way, like I did here, that should help you be able to open up a, the, the other open bit of it, right? Cause it's quite small. So you have to work with it. And then I'm just going to pull the rest of the zipper open in that direction. And this is probably the part that takes the longest. You know what? I'm going to trim away some of the seam allowance too. So this is something you can do. Cause I think that needle defaults to three eighths of an inch seam allowance instead of my quarter inch. Cause this does look a little bit chunkier, but it's no big deal, right? Just trim it. Or if you sewed a proper quarter of an inch seam allowance, you don't have to trim. This is, this is like the part that takes the longest. <laughs> Everything else is such an easy sew. 
Anne says, I love the projects you teach. I have learned so much from all your videos. I love to hear it. Now, if you're new here, make sure that you open up the description box. If you're watching us on YouTube, especially, I've put a link there for you to join our free email list. And that is the best way to keep in touch with everything Crafty Gemini from live events to courses, to new products, to sales, coupon codes, whatever it is that's going on in our business. That is the best way to um, keep in touch. So I'm just inserting my little bamboo knitting needle here. Careful, because although the faux leather is strong, I do not want you trying to do this with like the sharp point of your scissors or anything. You will bust a hole through it. So super careful. Just do something that's blunt, you know, and push out on all your corners. And oh my gosh, how cute. <laughs> Look at my little tiny faux leather pouch, y'all. This is like the cutest thing ever. Aren't they adorable? I'm like obsessed. And I love the mixing and matching of the different zippers with the faux leather. So again, if you need to get your hands on some faux leather, we sell them in four pack sheets. This one I showed early on in the show and I'll just take it out. You get four assorted colors because we don't get like a certain number of each. We get like a good mix. So we try to mix it up and make it nice and fun. Um, this one, for example, has a light blue, a metallic pink, that's so cute, black, and then yellow. And if you're gonna be making these little tiny faux leather pouches, we started off with pieces of the faux leather that measure four inches by seven for this tiny size. So from each sheet, you can cut three of them, okay? So not bad, right? From a four pack bundle like this, I think we sell them for 10 bucks, if I'm not mistaken, and you can make 12 pouches. So all you would need is your zippers, right? And your sewing supplies. We also sell another bundle that includes three assorted colors of sheets and three zippers of these craft zippers. Um, so you could use that too if you're, you don't have zippers in your stash. And of course, we've linked to everything below the video and in the live chat here on Facebook and YouTube, okay. Uh, Anna's asking, is it possible to save this video and watch it again later? Great video. Thank you. And yes, all the video links, wherever you're watching this right now, you can go right back there and watch it again. So if you're on Facebook, you would just go back to my Facebook page, or if you're on YouTube, which is probably the easiest way to do the search, in the search box on youtube.com, you can type in Whip Wednesday, Crafty Gemini, and all the episodes will pop up there for you. This is episode number 46. So you can take a note, screenshot it, write it down, the, the tiny zipper pouch, the faux leather. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Obsessed. All right, uh, let's see. Um, Diana says, wow, I think so too. They're super cute. Becky says, I appreciate all you do and teach. You're welcome, Becky. Thank you. All right, and Claudia says, I love the new t-shirt. I hope you will design more. So for those of you that don't know, last Wednesday I was wearing a t-shirt that we designed here that says Pretty Sides Touching. And I'm trying to see if I have any of the other samples here, but I don't. And so we do have some left in the online shop. And yes, Miss Claudia, we will be designing more. So it was a great hit. It looks like a lot of you really like the t-shirts. I have heard your feedback for those of you that say that you want like the crew neck or the unisex style t-shirt instead of a v-neck. So we are working on sourcing some of those and getting them done with our design so just hang in there with us if you don't have you know the style that you want we will be having a few more options in the future okay well thank you everybody for tuning in this was a super fun project and I love looking at four completed projects instant gratification <laughs> little makes so if you enjoyed this video and this demo make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're on Facebook just click the share button so you can share it with your crafty friends I know the holidays are coming up and we all want to make some super cute and quick zip pouch projects, all right? Thanks everybody for tuning in again. I appreciate you spending some time with me here making this fun project. Have a great rest of your week and I will see y'all next Wednesday for another episode of Whip Wednesday.